When the magazine rifle, later named the Lee Metford, was adopted in December of 1888, it represented a logical progression from the single-shot Martini Henry that it replaced. In keeping with the fire control practiced at the time, these rifles were fashioned to facilitate single loading, with the addition of a magazine for rapid fire to be held in reserve for decisive engagements. It was in this aspect that they were definitely an advance over their predecessors. These series of practices were shot to compare the rate of fire of three different methods of sustained fire. All practices consisted of nine rounds in a 1 plus 8 format, fired from the prone unsupported position. The range was 220 yards at a steel target that measured an optimistic 20 by 40 inches. The first round fired simulated the last round fired from the magazine, while the subsequent eight were then fired in a number of different configurations. The three practices shot were number one, all rounds loaded and fired singly from the pouch. Number two, the magazine loaded and then fired with magazine fire. And number three, all rounds loaded and fired singly with the ammunition on the parapet. Although these three practices are shot in the same way from a static position, historically the three different methods might have been used in different situations. This first practice is an example of individual fire, as prescribed in the musketry manuals of 1896, used in certain circumstances such as when in extended order in the firing line. Loading from the pouch was the prescribed drill and would have been used most times, perhaps on the advance and having arrived in a new firing position after a rush of some 30 or 40 yards. With another rush imminent and firing to cover the movement of another section, there would have been no time to pre-position ammunition in a more convenient place, as we will see in later practice. From this angle you can see the design of the second pattern slaved Wallace pouch with its outward opening flap. Although specifically designed to prevent ammunition loss while in position such as this, it is somewhat inconvenient having to move the top flap out of the way each time around is withdrawn. It does, however, fulfill its role in keeping the ammo secure, even while open. Although not firing at best speed, as the 220-yard target required a reasonable amount of concentration to hit, the practice was shot expeditiously, with no time wasted. This same principle would be applied in all three practices. As detailed in the 1896 rifle exercises, Magazine fire was tightly controlled, and much was written on who and what circumstances would affect its use. Generally, it was held in reserve until the decisive moment came, either in the attack or the defense. The question posed by this practice was simple. Was it more effective to charge the magazine and fire using it, with the inherent pause as charging was completed? Would the necessarily faster rate of fire using the magazine make up for the lack of fire while charging the magazine. As I become more familiar with the Mark I Lee Metford, I've realized the inherent advantage of later double-stacked magazines of the Mark II version and later magazine Lee Enfields. The single-stack magazine is finicky and does not lend itself well to fast charging. As shown shortly, the total time was shorter than in the first practice, but not hugely so. As for sustained fire, this demonstrates not quite the acme of technique. The third practice demonstrated not an actual prescribed technique as far as manuals and drills were concerned. There's ample historical evidence, however, to using this technique in certain circumstances, with the whole premise being to increase the rate of fire by having the ammunition close at hand. Movement while using this technique would not have been anticipated, and as such would have been only used while static. Use would probably have been restricted to fighting in the defense of a location from a shelter trench, as they were then called, or from behind a barricade, wall, or breastwork where one, movement was not the goal, and two, there was a convenient place to put an open packet of ammunition or two. As you will see, with no change in concentration or serious degradation of marksmanship principles from practice to practice, misses notwithstanding, 
This technique greatly improved the rate of sustained fire by over 30% over the next quickest technique. While not scientific, the results are interesting nonetheless. It is easy to see why the next technological improvement was readily adopted, if not somewhat after the fact, due in no small part to the receipt of such effective fire from the Boers in South Africa. This of course was the adaptation of charger loading in 1903, a feature first found on that most famous of rifles, the SMLE.